Hi, this is Ryan with Iron Planet Hobbies, and in part three of this video, I'm going to show you how to make the connection from the Power Pro onto JMRI. Okay, to get started, we have the Power Pro system here, the cutout, the Digikai's DR5088RC, and the RR Circuits LCC LocoNet Gateway. A little bit more about the cutout device. It does also have a 5 amp circuit breaker built into it. And these other two terminals here are a um, connection to make the reporting to the command station if there is a uh, circuit fault. Uh, the 5088RC has a local net connection. Um, also a USB connection that comes around up here. I have a USB isolator in there. You do not necessarily need that uh, unless you uh, plan on running it with the track power on to the PC app. And then last over here, we have the local net connection to the gateway and then another USB connection back to the PC. And so what this does is it is now sending the Railcom information through the local net to the gateway and from the gateway to the PC. And therefore you can see on the JMRI Panel Pro here, I have a block set up and you can see the locomotive address 7048 has entered. And then over here on the Digikai's PC app, uh, up close here we've got block number one and then 7048 is in the block. Uh, this PC app here has a lot of different features and settings. This is just one of the windows uh, to show the blocks and the local addresses in there. Um, if you want to have more blocks, you would just continue to set those up on your panel and then you assign your reporter labels to each panel. Uh, the detector here has uh, 16 channels of uh, block detection as well as railcom detection and then it has a 17th channel which is a global railcom detector. Um, the detection from the 5088RC is requires a lot uh, higher resistance than a typical block detector uh, due to the Railcom and that's what it just takes to get a good Railcom signal. So for instance if you already have um, let's say a, uh, a layout and you already have your block detection in place you can still add this uh, whether it's a local net based block detection or an NCE based block detection that doesn't matter. Uh, there's a little something that we like to call double blocking and you can double block your layout uh, very similar to the way you blocked it to begin with. The Railcom detection zones do not have to match uh, your uh, block detection that you have currently, uh, but it does make it easier to set that up. Uh, if you have one block but you want to have multiple Railcom detection zones within a block, you can do that as well. So to double block the layout, you take your rail A and rail B and if rail A is your common rail, rail B is your block detection rail, then you just do the exact opposite. You would make rail B your common, and then rail A becomes your block detect or your railcom detection. So therefore, you would just double gap the track at each block boundary, and then you can do that all within a single booster district or a protected zone through a single circuit breaker, uh, however you want to set that up. So you just you just flip-flop the way you had it before. So um, I've got another video that I did in the past on how to double block the layout. Same thing would apply on this setup here. And so uh, by doing that, uh, we can just uh, come up here to the PC and just show you exactly how that works. So I've got 7048 has entered the block. And then if I come back here and let's tilt the locomotive off of the track here, come back up you can see the block turns black showing it's not occupied and 748 has exited the block and then on this one you can also see the locomotive number has disappeared so if I drop the engine back on the track 7048 entered block sensor has activated and then as well as over here uh, same thing so that is pretty much how you set that up uh, if there is enough interest and uh, get some comments if you would like to see how that is all set up in JMRI uh, doing the programming part of it I'd be more than happy to do it um, 
If you guys can think of some other uh, ways to use this setup, um, some other advantages, uh, ways to you know use it on your layout, uh, please leave those in the comments and questions below. And as always, thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe for more videos.